guys, welcome to today's video. Once again, I am not naked. I do have a t-shirt wrapped around me. Boom. But I have put on the Dior face and body on my chest so everything would look a little bit even. And I'm also testing a foundation that is not new. But when I did the Clay de Peau, this one, the, the new one, the Radiant, I think it's called, somebody said to me that the Kokendo Moisture Foundation, voila, very, very similar. So I paid for these little samples. I feel like, really? I, you could get these free, right, if I walked into a store. And I, I paid $7 for shipping. And I got the medium tone. But this is color 013. I'm also experiencing allergies, so my nose is running and my eyes are puffy and I've given you all the excuses I possibly can. We're here to look at this new eyeshadow palette from Artis Couture. And they are calling it Supreme Mauves and I played with it yesterday. You can be the decider on if you think these are mauve. When I saw these on Sephora and when I opened it, I thought, yeah, I'm totally getting it. Let's uh, do some swatching, you guys. But before we get into it, I'd really appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up. It really helps to push out my videos so more people can find me and consider following me. It's all in my description box, but it's at the very end. On Instagram, I am the underscore hooded underscore lid, and I'd love to see you there, and I'm really happy to see you here right now. So if you have not been here before, for larger palettes, I much prefer to swatch by color groups than by rows, because we already see it by rows. We know what it looks like. But what's interesting to me is when you put color depths of tone or colors together, you can really see the difference. So that's what we're going to do. This is obviously the lightest shade. I'm going to not do that for the moment because these three are mattes and they're really interesting to me. I've been very disappointed recently. I got the Charlotte Tilbury, sent her back. I got the Patrick Ta, sent it back because they really ended up being more coppery, very warm on me than I was looking for. You know what, I take it back. I am gonna do this one. So we're gonna do this and this. This looks neutral, taupey initially, but I'm finding more and more these days. What something looks like initially isn't what it looks like <laughs> eventually. So it, it's right there. It's a kind of a shell pink and this looks taupe. And then we're going to go into these three mattes. This is so creamy. Creamy, creamy. I've never tried this line before and on my fingers, I'm like, yeah, 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 I, I could see that. That's, that's neutral. Wait for it. So here they are. It's funny. Right now, you can see, I think, that this is quite warm, right? This is the base for all the looks that you're going to get. Now, this one is more neutral. It's not too cold. In other words, it can work with the warm, but I think it can work with this cool as well. And this is warm. And then we have the two colors that are not warm. That's a little scratchy, but that maybe this feels like a different formula. And this one. They all feel slightly different. So here, they're definitely pinky. And let's just put those up here. So that's that one, and then we'll put this one here. Oh, <laughs> Digma there. Definitely pinker tone. And this, yes, that is a cooler, pinker kind of brown. Let us play. So I changed now that uh, my foundation is dry. So let's take a nice little, I think this is a Wayne Goss 18, very similar to things from Sigma and from MAC, the 217. And we're going in with this kind of peachy for all over the lid. I did prime the lids, giving it the best opportunity, a little bit of oils remarkably are coming through and this is pretty much my skin tone. A little peaky, a little peachy and it looks almost like nothing on my primed lids. 
But if you have not primed your lids, and I usually don't, but I'm trying to do it more often, then this color will help take away redness and other colors that might be on your lid. And I'm going to do some comparisons to two of the Tom Fords I recently got so we can see what this color story is really because it's all about what you hold it up to you know but I'm hoping this will hit the pink dreams that the other things I bought recently just did not looks like just about nothing so I'm going to take this same brush and I'm going in with this shade which read pretty taupey but my god it's looking really dark on on that I'm a little scared and I'm going with a light hand I just want to give myself a little bit of definition where my crease would be. And I'm going slow because I've noticed something. If you are older or hooded, you are experiencing crepiness. I've noticed that when I do the color from out to in, it hits the crepes in such a way that it hits everything. All the skin where if I go from in to out there's more chance of skipping especially on this eye so that is you know a mature skin tip or a hooded eye tip I mean if you're just completely taut god bless you and you'll see my skin's not even moving I'm barely touching this and I kind of feel like I'll have a better chance of getting an even application that I don't have to blend for three days with this kind of application. So this brush is Goat, which picks up a lot more than Squirrel. But I'm letting the brush do the work, like I'm hardly doing anything. And as a result, I am going to have to blend this a little bit. But there's those two colors. Now I'm going in with this Wayne Goss brush. I don't know what it is. I'll have to look it up. It seems that the number is in an unexpected place. And it might be in black. So hard to see. And I'm going to use this to do a soft blend. And it really does the trick. It is a squirrel. But this has a taper that's very unusual compared to my other squirrels from Chicago. It's kind of like a candlestick, so it's a little more pointed and tapered at the end. 100%. You could stop here, and it would be a lovely everyday look. It just gives me a little bit of dimension, emphasizes the eyes a little bit, and that's fine. But you know, if you've been here before, of course we're going to do more. And just thinking about this right now, you guys, I feel that since this palette to me it does have warm qualities. I think I'm going to come back tomorrow and shoot another look and it'll be a warm look. So this will be the pinker look. So this palette could be actually something you can get a couple of things out of, which is nice. I'm going in with this color down at the bottom and this is a goat. So again, might have been a mistake. Probably going to pick up a little bit. And again, barely touching the lid because we picked up so much and just letting the brush transfer the color to the skin. Because of my hoodedness, I want to go a little bit higher so you can actually see the color. I remember ages ago, ages ago, when Samantha Ravindal's channel was more makeup oriented, I would watch, actually I followed her, and she said in one video, and it just makes sense, let the brush do the work. So I'm trying to keep that in mind today. All right, now I think we are getting too pinky though. Now I'm seeing a little bit of a gentle, lovely pink, and I am not mad about it. It's not, I know a lot of people, they don't like the pink palettes, but to me, the pink palette isn't about screaming pink, although that can be very pretty. I happen to love it. But this is the kind of pink that is more fleshy and more natural looking because it seems appropriate to the skin tone. 
if that makes sense. So now I guess we're going to have to play with some of these shimmers. So let's look at this one and this one again. This one is more like a shimmer and this is more taupey. So let's just do the shimmer. I haven't taken the plastic off so I can't see in that one. And see what happens. I've left my lid light so I put all my color in the crease area. And that is really, really pretty. So it's not really a topper in this particular case. And then I'm going to take the taupey one and do like the outer corner. I think I'll have better luck if I do a flat brush. And this might give a little definition to the eye, make it I think I'm, oh, I got some down here. That was my fault. It didn't, that's not even fall down. I think my brush hit that. All right, now I'm going to get a blending brush and do a little more blending right here. I'm going to fill in my brows, do some mascara, do some tight line, and then we'll talk about cheeks because why not? All right, I have done a little tight lining my brows, my mascara, and I did the Charlotte Tilbury again today. You know, another thing I love about this is that wand grabs onto the lower lashes so nicely that I even did a little bit of lower lash. I just, I'm thrilled. That is, it's quickly making it up to my favorite Charlotte Tilbury product. But today we're going to do a little bit of dropping of stuff. And then we're going to do the Clay de Poe highlighter, which I really love. And a little trip, you guys. If you find, like I do, that powder highlighters migrate, and they migrate all the way up here, and that's not something you like, use your fingers as your guide. So I don't want to have highlighter any further than the end of my eye, but my eye is small, so your might be different, and at the most, the pupil. So I'm just gonna put my finger here, and boom, and boom. I can hear somebody's car outside idling for the last five minutes. Who is up? Oh, Carter Rochette. And this is such a subtle, lovely dream. I just like to blend out because sometimes it can really polish those pearls, but also can handle any edges there might be. So the look is very skin-like. I think. You can see it more on this side because the door right here. So darn pretty. I almost feel like I like the lip, what's going on, and I feel like I'm wearing no blush and I kind of don't think I need any blush, but let's do some bronzer and then we'll figure it out. A little bit of blush and the bronzer is the Guerlain, the new and healthy glow, I think it's called in 00. zero. And I guess a cooler blush would be appropriate. So I could go in with this, which is Divine Rose. And you know what? Just holding it up to my face, I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, that's the one. Right on the cheeks. And then pull it up. So it's not going, again, any further than this. I'm more and more feeling like my face is coming alive. And I just need to decide what kind of color. I do enjoy this color. Um, let's try my new Sicily. I, I have some of my stuff on the floor here. So this might be a little dark. I am actually wearing the color from Dries van Noten, which I will have to list below because I have to get a magnifying glass and look it up. But it's much more sheer and not as deep in tone. 100% I think this works, but kind of lost that pinkness so I think I'm going to go into one of my Givenchy so this is Rouge Grand Grain I'm not mad at it you could certainly put something lighter over it put some foundation over it if it's a little too much for you but I don't know I feel like I've been doing a lot of light pinks lately oh I know let's put this on over it this is from Hourglass and it's finally out it's on the Hourglass site it will gloss it up and light it up a little bit. So this look, I'm really pretty pleased with. I feel like I'm getting that 
pinky fleshy thing that I had been craving from the other palettes and we are going to do a warm look tomorrow and see just how warm we can go because I think it's pretty warm. But I wanted to compare these to a couple of things. So this is Insolent Rose from Tom Ford and when I hold them up together, really? Not, not so much. You know, you would think yes, like over here, but not really. And I think when you compare these, you can really see how much warmth is in the artist couture. And then I did Sous le Sable, which I happen to love. And suddenly it's like, oh, hey, a matter of fact, if you put it up like this and take out those brights, uh, there's a good deal of sameness going on here. So I thought we would do some comparison swatching. I don't feel that we're going to find things that are exactly the same, so I'm just going to swatch the mattes in this row, and maybe this one, and then all four of the Tom Ford, and just show you my arm, and, you know, we'll decide. All right, you guys, this is the taupe from the top row, and this mattes from the second row. This is the Tom Ford, but I only did three shades. I didn't do the very lightest shade. But just, I love I love this beautiful, beautiful satin deliciousness. I feel when I look at it this way, they absolutely relate to each other. But when I go like this and look at it, I think the Tom Fords are much, much cooler. I would say that this color, which is the front top row, that relates more to this. So the Sula Saba, while it looks, when I hold them up together, like, wow, these really relate to each other, it is a little bit more cooler and not as warm as this palette that's supposed to be a mauve palette. Nonetheless, I love the look that I got today a lot. And now we're going to do one more look and see just how warm we can get this to go. All right, you guys, this is the second day and I'm getting a late start and it's really hot today. So <laughs> let's get going. I didn't do a good swatch of these shimmer shades yesterday. So let's start off with that and then we're going to see how warm we can go. So I'll just start upside down. So this is the bottom row and there's these two. They look like this and there is a shift to this color. And when I'm doing this, I see green to purple. Kind of reminds me of Pat McGrath did something like that. But when I go here, there's gold in it too, which again, I think she did something like that for one of her rose palettes. In the middle row, there's just this one. And this has a shift too, for sure. And that looks pretty coppery to pink. And I think it's a multi-chrome as well, like a trio chrome. I'm seeing two colors here, I think. Mm, no, maybe it's just a something with a flip. I'm not really the person to go to on the technical details of shimmers. And then we have two. This one, which is rather taupey, and this one that feels like one of those NARS shimmers that I love so much. They don't have a lot or sometimes they have nothing as a foundation and it's just a lovely sprinkling of shimmer. But not the way I just pushed into it just now. Isn't that interesting? When I used it yesterday, I just pressed like this, it had that lovely shimmer. But if you really go deep into it, it's more like one of these, I would say metallic with a little bit of shimmer. And those are the colors we have. They're not super exciting for me and how they apply will probably be very different than how they swatch. So once again I'm going to go in with this lightest shade all over the lid. Yesterday I primed with the Dior backstage and I did again today but I didn't powder it today so today this is going to be the powder. And these mattes here to me read quite warm, so that's the area we're going to play in. I'm going back in with the same brush, which is Wayne Goss 18. I'll start with the one that seems to be the lightest, and you know, when you put it on the brush, you're thinking, oh, not so light. Again, I've never used these before, you guys, and I am very impressed 
and I'm barely touching the lid. You can see my skin's not moving all that much. I think I'm just going to do the same kind of thing where the color will be primarily, we'll see, but primarily above the mobile lid. So we can really get an idea for those shimmers if that's your wheelhouse. It's really not mine. The look I did yesterday, those kind of shimmers I'm fine with. Boom. Again, this could just be your one and done or your two and done. Just give you a little bit of receding, a little bit of shape. I'm telling you, if I just put on mascara and liner right now, it would be great. But we're going to keep on going, of course. Now, this tone is a little bit more what I call a fleshy tone with a pinkish undertone. So I'm going to go in with this one. And you might be able to see that it is a little bit powdery, but it's not an issue. Just work it into the brush and tap off the excess so you don't get it all over your face and you should be fine. And I'm just going to deepen up that area. Very, very light touch. I wish I had the time this morning. I don't know what happened to my morning. It disappeared. I'm like, oh my god, it's one, which I am usually not shooting at one or I'm finishing at one. So I didn't really get, get it together enough to pick a blouse that would be good with a warm tone. I just went with my t-shirt. Nothing wrong with that. And once again, I'm going in with the Wayne Goss that doesn't have a number. My magnifying glass is in the other room because I was playing with foundations today. I'm wearing three shades of the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation, and I think this is it. Like the Santa Fe, a little too dark, but when it dries down, I did a test on my arms today. At first, when it goes on, it's like way too warm. And I compared it to my Reboot, and I just had arm swatches all over, just mixing the Deauville with the Santa Fe, mixing the Vienna with the Santa Fe, and then mixing all three together, and that's what I have right now. Deauville, Santa Fe, and Vienna. But once they dry down, I could really see what was going on. And I think this is a very nice match for me right now. This is super pretty, right? It's not too warm. It's just not mauve. It's, you know, in the area of skin for people who have more yellow or maybe olive in their skin tone this would probably be the same thing as the more pinker tones are to me and for me it's not bad it's not making me uncomfortable now the question is what color because we have so many kind of diverse colors the purple the copper the neutral we did these two yesterday so i feel like i have to do one of those and i just uh, they're dark, they're crazy. I'm gonna go in with with the copper one. I know a lot of people like copper, so why not? I'm going to go in with a brush and then we'll try it with the finger. And again, I just really don't know where to put it on an eye like mine. If it were lighter, I would put it in the inner corner, but it's not that light. So I guess I'll just put it all over the lid. And you know what? It's swatched very copper, but I do see a pinkness to it now, but it's not... Um, it's an unusual kind of pink. Dare I say it's a rose gold. I'm going to get my brush wet. There it is. It's, I'm going to do it with my pinky. And I'm wondering if... I could actually make this palette look kind of similar, but not too similar, to the Patrick Ta palette, that kind of coppery, rosy situation. Very pretty, and still kind of wearable because I didn't go crazy. I think it's time. It's time to go crazy. Uh, Chikahoto, it's always down below, and I'm going to go in with this darkest color see what happens.
this is quite dark and it seems a little patchy. So when I swatched it, I thought, wow, lots of pigment, but I was pressing down pretty hard. It's not that it isn't workable and that I couldn't make it workable, but I'm just sharing my first impressions. I think you're gonna, I am going to certainly have to spend a little time blending this. All right, you guys, since I am in a hurry, I'm gonna stop the camera now and do the liner, do the lashes, do the brows, do the lips, do the blush, and come back with the final look, and then we'll talk about what my impressions are of this palette and this brand, since it's the first time I've tried anything from Artist Couture. And you guys, this is the final look. Uh, the blush, I went into the Tom Ford again. I just adore this product. I just used this right here, right on the cheeky cheeks. I did a little powder on my skin. I'll put down everything that I'm wearing down below, the lips, the eyes, liner, mascara, bronzer, the whole shkabang. But I really, really, I really love this look. Eyes closed, eyes open, I was wrong. I thought you could get a warm look out of this and a rosy look out of this. And even though the first two colors I put down, the matte colors, were 100% warm in their nature, I just feel like I didn't really get a super, super warm look. This dark color is something that requires a little bit of finessing. It, the texture is different. And there's a, I see some shimmers on my lid, and I wonder if there's actually some shimmers in that because it felt rough when I swatched it, kind of like sandpaper. Um, this color I thought was like a copper, but I think it's a copper rose or, you know, yeah, pink rose, copper rose, uh, rose gold, something around those lines. And I think it's very, very pretty. It's not too dramatic because I use that darkest shade judiciously, but 100%, if you want to go ham with this and have a very dramatic look, I think you can get it without a problem. And I loved yesterday's look too. I mean, I'm so, I'm so surprised how much I love it this way. For me, the Charlotte Tilbury didn't work, the Patrick Ta didn't work. This is hitting my desire for something a little bit pink out of everything that I've seen so far. I'm very surprised. I'm very surprised because online I thought yes and then I got it and I thought oh no and then I put it on and I got two very pretty looks. Now it is the first time as I mentioned that I've used this brand and I really like these and I found I had no problems using this on my very creepy eyelids. So it's great color story, great variety in one palette, great formula for older lids, younger lids that are crepey, hooded lids, all of it. It stayed vibrant all day yesterday. I didn't wash my makeup off until midnight. Yeah, I, don't, <laughs> I really don't like washing my face that late. But this is a win for me. Those other I sent back, this I am keeping. And yay there we have it i hope it was helpful to you and i hope you come back again and let me know what your thoughts are if you think this is something that'll work for you i'm just super delighted until we meet again be safe and smart and i'm wishing you good health <laughs>